The Weather Channel is brought to you by this cable or satellite provider. You can also get reliable forecasts from the Weather Channel through this radio station or visit weather.com. Escape the cold with Wish You Were Here Week, all next week on the Weather Channel. Now, you're local on the Yates. A winter weather advisory is in effect for our area. Currently in our area, 14 degrees with snow showers. Our local Doppler radar. For tonight, snow, low 11. Winds northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Snow accumulating 1 to 3 inches. And on Saturday, partly cloudy, high 24. Winds northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And Saturday night, a few clouds from time to time, low 14. Winds east southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And on Sunday, cloudy, high, 38. Winds southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook. When severe weather is at its worst, weather.com is at its best. We are back in Lakeshore Drive this evening in Chicago. I'm meteorologist Mike Seidel, and there's the tower cam from WMEQ. You can see the snow coming down on Michigan Avenue. Roads are in better shape than they were just an hour ago as the plows are out trying to handle this snowfall rate of up to an inch an hour. We'll check the radar, check in with Jim Cantori coming up now as Weather Center Live begins another hour this evening. Good Friday evening. You're watching an extended edition of Weather Center Live. I'm Crystal Ager. And I'm Kelly Cass. Time now is 8 Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, and we are tracking a widespread winter storm impacting not only the Midwest, but the Northeast as well. We have extended our live coverage tonight, so uh, we'll track this high impact storm, of course, and you won't see tonight's episode of Coast Guard Alaska. We do have live crews in Chicago and New York tonight, along with our storm tracker, Jim Cantori, right here in Atlanta, just back from his live coverage in Seattle. That's right, and of course, our new winter weather expert, Tom Nizzle, is working hard right now analyzing this winter storm. He'll make his Weather Channel on-air debut coming up. Plus, our severe weather expert, Dr. Greg Forbes, is also with us tracking storms in the south. Already, this winter storm caused a big mess in the Midwest, canceling hundreds of flights, turning interstates into parking lots in places like Chicago. And for a check on how things are going there right now, we want to turn over to meteorologist Mike Seidel, who just had dinner recently. And uh, Mike, it looks like the snow is really filling in again. Yeah, we're getting these bands as we've been uh, showing you on the radar. Jim will show you those in a minute. And until those move out, we're going to have snow, I think, another two or three hours. And then we'll be in better shape. Now, the highways, lakes are driving in much better shape. If you were watching uh, just an hour or so ago, we had a lot of snow on the highway. But the plows have come by four or five at a time. Uh, the salt and the traffic beginning to work a little bit, even though the temperatures are still uh, generally 18 to 20 across Chicagoland. The snow will wind down this evening. As far as flights go, pretty much forget it. We've had over 830 flights canceled today. A better day tomorrow. But remember, a lot of people have been booked into tomorrow's flights. So hopefully you're able to grab a seat uh, tomorrow uh, and hopefully you don't have to stay here till Sunday. There's your radar again, the snow coming in. Uh, it's backed off now uh, west of Rockford. The Quad Cities are done. We've had six to eight inch totals out in the eastern parts of Iowa and we'll likely have totals uh, upwards of six to eight inches around Chicagoland. Uh, meanwhile, the impacts again, the highways, a mess. 
Long commuting times for the rush hour. It'll be much better tomorrow once we get some sunshine. Temperatures aren't going to go above freezing, but between the sunshine and the traffic, and once the snow ends, uh, the plows will be able to catch up. Speaking of the plows, here's that army of plows on Lakeshore Drive, making the U-turn right out where we are here on Monroe, and then heading northbound, and this is a way to do it. It's just uh, one set of plows. They scrape the entire highway uh, northbound, then they come back southbound. So Jim Cantori, uh, this this isn't Seattle. They know what they're doing here. <laughs> Not to say that Seattle doesn't know what they're doing, yeah, but right. you know they have the practice here. When you talk about a city like Seattle that averages a little under six inches an entire season. Yeah. Exactly, and I and I got to be honest. With you, I think Seattle did a pretty good job, certainly keeping the main thoroughfares uh, all set up, and you know, then to top it off with an ice storm the next day, wow, that was a big deal, no question about it. But uh, they'll be slow to improve, and now of course a flood situation uh, sets up for them. We've had already some flooding in Oregon, some historic flooding uh, in the Willamette Valley, by the way. All right, let's talk about what's happening uh, on the radar tonight because there is a lot of stuff going on. First of all, Chicago, notice the visibility. That's key. It's starting to go up just a little bit in through here. So that tells me, let's take a look at the Gibson Ridge radar. You can see the banding that Mike's talking about going on, but it's thinning out. The bands are thinning out. They're not as intense. The forcing is heading to the east right now. So you can see the back edge of the snow basically uh, just on the Rockford, Oregon line and pretty much running right down into the metro area here over the next couple of hours or so. So we should be done. But I wanted to take you a little farther east. This is Fort Wayne. And again, just because this is blue, does not mean it's not snow. It's a higher resolution radar and uh, the color tables are different. But I wanted to show you this little area here around Rochester and north of Huntington. That is some very heavy snow, which is going to move into Fort Wayne. So if you're watching us from Fort Wayne, send me a tweet uh, at Jim Cantori and tell me uh, what the visibility goes down to, eh, let's say in the next uh, 20, 20, 30 minutes or so, because it looks like it's just going to absolutely hammer in that region there. All right, down to the south, we've had some freezing drizzle around St. Louis. Uh, we've had more, uh, again, heading up by 70 between uh, Indianapolis and the Illinois line. This area here between 74 and 70 is going to be an absolute mess because it is uh, accumulating uh, on the roads and through here. Temperatures, remember, are uh, below freezing here. Now, a lot of this isn't even reaching the ground. I don't even think we're getting any verification to precipitation here. So what that's going into is saturating the layer. It's saturating the air. Eventually we'll get a little bit of light snow here and there. We may start off as snow. Uh, certainly, I think we will in Pittsburgh. Uh, even Baltimore, Washington can't rule out a little bit of light snow before the change on, oh, but before the changeover occurs to some sleet and even some freezing rain, and then eventually all rain. That'll be the case in New York City. But I think the big deal there will be tomorrow morning as folks head out in the Big Apple. All right, Crystal, uh, airports, a problem, especially all the way to the West Coast. And you know firsthand, Jim, with your flight canceled about four times, finally getting in on a red eye early this morning, traveling all the way from SeaTac. And by the way, in the West, San Francisco still experiencing big delays. We expect that again tomorrow. If you're trying to get to the Niners game for the weekend, could run into some trouble, trouble in Boston for the game we're expecting as well as all of the snow moves in here across the Northeast. Most of the snow isn't impacting our major hubs right now, but you can plan on that changing quickly overnight and into early tomorrow morning. Notice all the volume on our exclusive flight tracker. We can see the planes coming and going. No big delays, but we will see this add up by tomorrow morning as all of the moisture moves in. It only takes a little bit of snow and of course those low clouds and we'll certainly see some trouble here across the northeast tomorrow. It's not just the northeast, but the south places like Atlanta. We're expecting delays with showers and thunderstorms in the area. Philly, you're included and all the way back into San Fran and Los Angeles with the rain moving in. Kelly? Stay with us for continuing coverage of all that snow pushing east and we have not forgotten about the west. Thousands are still without power tonight and the storms aren't over. We'll show